Welcome to the All in All channel where we discuss everything that happens, completely everything, all in all. Life, lies, deceptions, and the truth, because the truth shall set us free. As we are starting a new series called Childlessness, we project to the future where we'll be having babies or not, because we project, we want to be having babies the way things are. So, welcome to part one. I just enjoy it. We listen to it as we learn and change our thoughts along the way. Welcome. What advice would you give to women that are in their 20s? Party it up, travel, hang out, kick it as much as possible. You have the stamina to do it now. When you get into your 30s, that stamina will drop. And you will still travel. You will still go out. It's not as much as you do in your 20s. You are not married right now or not engaged. Do not get married in your 20s. Get married in your 30s. Women over 40. If you could give one piece of advice to a woman in her 30s, what advice would you give her? You look so pretty. Come here. A lot of us didn't have kids. And we don't regret it. You are not old. You are not getting old. You have so much life ahead of you. If you have dreams and passions you want to pursue, go for it. You're going to be sexier in your 40s and your 50s. So again, choose you. Dump his ass. Bet on you. Take up space. Since before we could walk, we have been conditioned to make ourselves small, quiet, agreeable, comforting, unlearn it, talk loud, laugh hard, howl at the fucking moon, <laughs> man spread, and fight for other women to do the same. You can't plan life. When you're in your 20s, when you're in your 30s, you're always thinking, I need to get married by this age or have kids by this age, and I want to have two kids, and I want my husband to look like this, and I want this, and I want this, and it never or very rarely works out that way. What I'm about to say is something that I wish women would have an honest conversation about. And it's that you only get a certain amount of time to have your own biological children. It's not a popular conversation among career-minded women. And it's not a conversation that men have to have. This burden is strictly on us women. But the reality is, is that the trajectory of our careers kicks off in our late 20s. We're gung-ho by the time that we're in our 30s. And we often want to keep that momentum going, and so we focus on our careers. The problem with that is that children don't come sometimes as easily as you think they're going to. You see the ONS data that came out a couple of weeks ago that said for the first time ever since records began, 50.1% of women are childless by 30. The amount of options are just overwhelming, so you start getting picky. So there are more women without children at 30 than there are women with children. What, what our society does to 19-year-old women or 18-year-old women, 19-year-old women, we just lie to them all the time. You know, the first lie is, there's nothing more important than your career, more or less by definition. So that's the first lie. The second lie is, there will be nothing more important to you in your life than your career. And so that's the second lie. And then the third lie is, there should be nothing more important in your life than the, your career. So that's the third lie. I, I think a lot of women do that and they chase the bag and they chase the career and then they find themselves alone at 50 60 and it that's not fun Got and it. i think and i think a lot of older women lie to younger women about mm -hmm. this and that's what rubs me the wrong way that's why i do what i do because i just don't believe in lying to women how do women older women lie to younger women because they'll say things like like the happiest sector of women <laughs> is like 45 and childless but you could find 10 studies that disprove that for the one that they have that didn't have a proper sample size so you're, you're pushing this narrative because you don't want to be alone in your poor choices they're almost like validating their poor decisions is what you're saying yeah and you can see it in the media all the time like mm -hmm. every poor decision a woman makes like you see it in the media like for example like women gain weight right what, what body positivity that's oh, the yeah. next thing that comes out well, we eight. just talked about that yeah. with Jordan Peterson Rolo yeah how yeah we Women believe that they have more time than they actually do. So when we talk about like women's biological clock, we usually talk about that right around when a woman is like 30, 31 years right. old. If women have a biological clock, it's really when they're 23. That's the height of their fertility window and when they can yeah. best, you know, they're most attractive and they can carry a baby to term. And they're much more, they're, you know, the, the younger a woman is, the easier it is to, to have that child. Now that's contradicted by um, by quotes from very powerful women, um, such as like, say, Sheryl Sandberg. When she was writing Lean In, one of her advice for young women was this. It says, when looking for a life partner, 
my advice to young women is to date all of them. The bad boys, the cool boys, the commitment phobic boys, the crazy boys, but do not marry them. The things that make them bad, uh, the bad boys sexy do not make them good husbands. When it comes time to settle down, find some, comes time to settle down, find someone who wants an equal partner, someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated, and ambitious, someone who values fairness and expects, or even better, wants to do his share in the home. These men exist, and trust me, over time, nothing is sexier. That's the message that is countering the idea that, oh, be a mom, settle now, get, get, you know, find a guy who's a good bet for the future. I think the byproduct of like one thing that I probably did absorb that I wasn't even cognizant that I was absorbing was the idea that you have so much time. Um, I'm yeah. sure that going through my life, I felt like there was just a lot of time for everything. I didn't know. I, I always was open to things. I personally didn't know like if I was meant to have kids. I didn't always know that. I wasn't one of those women that like just knew that right away for some reason. Um, I didn't know if I would get married. It was I didn't know. But what I did feel is that I had a lot of time. And what you realize is that it takes time, you know, to get to know someone and then you get engaged and then you move in together, you get married, whatever order you want to do that in. And then you have a baby and that stuff takes time. That block of life takes time. So you don't have as much time as I think media would like women to believe. There is not an endless biological clock waiting. And what you see is when they hit sort of 31, they start freaking out that, oh my goodness, the, the time is running out. You know, once you hit 30, you go to the doctor. The doctor will say, oh, you know, you're 30 now. Have you thought about having kids in the next year or so? Because, you know, time's running out. And often women have not even contemplated it until that moment. But when they do, it's only in that uh, uh, point in which it's already basically too late that they look around and see there aren't many eligible men left. And why is that? Well, for women who are of a certain education level, so tertiary degree or above, in the West, so I'm talking about you know Western Europe, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, and places like that, there are 50%, get your head around this, 50% more single women than men at age 30. Why is that? Well, number one, more women than men attend and graduate university. This is something that's been the case for the last 20, 25 years and uh, has never happened before in all of human history before that. Uh, secondly, men who are highly successful, who are driven, ambitious, educated, uh, high status positions, well, they are either already married by age 30 or they're in their 30s dating women who are in their 20s. And then third, and this is potentially the most important, is that women through a combination of nature and nurture are trained from birth to marry up, so-called. That is to find a guy who's more educated, wealthy, experienced, uh, has more income uh, than themselves. Now, that's extremely difficult to do if you are a highly educated woman who's driven, career-minded, uh, in a high status position because there just aren't that many men in that category and those that are in that category, as I said, are dating younger women. So when you're in your 20s and you're a highly attractive, driven, uh, intellectually minded woman, well, you're just surrounded by guys all of the time because you're in your 20s, you're attractive and, and you're you're um, you know, a high value dating partner. So women in that space don't think about it. They go, well, yeah, when I'm ready, when I've finished my university and I've got my career and I've put my deposit on the house, then I'll start to think about, you know, who I want to marry and have kids with. They reach the age of 30 and when they are in that category, there aren't any men available. Where have all the good men gone? Well, a lot of them are married. Some of them are no longer with us. And a lot of them, they kind of just are sick of the fucking double standards that women are putting out there every day. And so they're just staying to themselves. They're towing their line. They're not giving women a chance because we are not worth the risk when we don't hold ourselves to the same standards 
that men are held to. Men need to understand that, that when women open up a dating app, it's just thousands of suitors. And so she starts picking on the dumbest stuff. I don't like his bracelet. I don't like that guy's shoes. His eye doesn't look right. He had one hair on his nose. It's like the weirdest things now because you have so much to choose from. You can literally stitch the perfect man again. Former Lehman Brothers CFO Aaron Callen opens up about the regret she feels for putting her career ahead of her personal life. The opposite of what you're hearing from other top women in business right now. She was once one of the most powerful women on Wall Street, CFO of Lehman Brothers. And I did achieve great success in my career. I'm just trying to provide a bit of what I'll call a warning label that hey, there's something else to think about as you're leaning in, so to speak. I've had many young women over time that I've tried to give advice to, guidance to, and I would always be very honest and say, don't do it like me. You mentioned consequences. What are they? A lot of things during my career that I missed out on. You know, uh, events, relationships with people, birthday parties, just spending time with friends and family and enjoying it and enjoying myself. There was a big thing I missed out on, which is I, I didn't have children. Now 47, Erin Callen is trying to have children and offering a life lesson she wishes someone had offered her. I wanted to be a little bit sort of a cautionary tale. Like, you can achieve, you can accomplish, you can have an amazing career with great success, even in a male-dominated field that I did. But be careful what you wish for and the choices that you make. Hi, guys. Like, I'm so sad right now because... I just came to like a realization these past few days have been so hard for me. Cause like, you know how men say that women have toxic feminism and that like, you'll get to a certain age and like no one will want to marry you and no one will love you. Like, I feel like I've gotten to that point, guys. Like I was so hung on to this feminism thing and I missed out on marriage and on children. And now, like, I'm at a point in my life where, like, I'm so bitter. I'm so jealous of people who have marriages because they are so happy and their husbands don't even cheat on them. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That, that was funny. That was funny. Hi, guys. Hi guys. So, so today, today I'm, I'm gathering, gathering all my courage, courage to talk to, talk you, to guys you guys about, about something you've been asking, asking me in my comments. comments. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so, so it is it's true. true. I am, I am a virgin. virgin. This is our Kenyan girl. Kenyan girl. I tell you I don't want children and then you come to my life and think you will trick me and get me pregnant. <laughs> I will flash it faster than we used to flash each other before please convince it, okay? Usha yenda kwa wenyewe, ala kukahara. The way you flash that toilet properly. I will flash this your child. <laughs> don't joke with me. Huh? I will flash this your child. Bro, there is no shame in our country anymore. Our country, it is cloud chasing. Say whatever you want to say, as long as you push whatever agenda you have in your head. Udem, she's proud to talk about she will flash your child. Yeah, now your fifth head, at a flash, mtoiwako. Whichever, whatever it is you put in her, she's going to flash. Now, by the time I was able to do a flash, I was six or seven. I love when you put a whole day and say, I have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. We see you walking with her in town. Now only flash Gordon. I watch a guy.